some back pain for 10, maybe 11 years. At first, uh, I just, my dad has the same pain on the same exact side, right side, all the way from neck, all the way down, shoulder blade, well, shoulder, shoulder blade, rib cage, and into the hip. So it's starting in behind the muscle right below the skull, right here. Right there it starts? Really tight, yeah. Okay, and it's traveling down the it's right down side? down my neck and okay. goes into pretty much like the trapezius muscle and sometimes into my collarbone. It goes into my shoulder blade or like the middle of my back and then goes down. There's like a tightness in my rib cage and then the hip really bucks. And you said 10 years ago? What it happened? started then, they told me I had scoliosis in middle school. So I started working out around 18, that's when the problem started. Who told you you had scoliosis? I don't know, they ran like a ruler along my back and they said you have a slight scoliosis. Were you bent over forward? Mm -hmm. Okay, so bent over forward, they ran a ruler yeah. and said, oh, you have scoliosis. Mm -hmm. Did they have you take an x-ray for that Not or then. anything? Did they give you any advice on what to do? No. Okay, deal with it. Yeah. Okay, they mm -hmm. told you you're gonna have issues? That's what my dad said. He's like, oh, we'll, we'll see. He works in the hospital, but okay. he has spinal stenosis, so okay. once the pain started coming, he's like, now you're going to have to deal with it. I dealt with it. This is, this is the How does dad have. deal with it? Uh, benzodiazepines and antidepressants. He has like numbing, and sometimes his fingers are cold in the morning because his spine is squeezed. So, okay. Did he have scoliosis as well? I think so. Okay, and we're going to talk about that because you actually don't have scoliosis. And we need, to, we need to talk about it, okay? Because there's a lot of people saying it's a loose term. If right. there's any curvature on this A to P film looking at someone from behind, they're telling them, oh, you have scoliosis, just deal with it. Okay, what else? Uh, sometimes I, during stress, I notice the muscles get tighter. Or if I don't go to the gym for an extended period of time, like kind of stretch the muscles. Okay. And I feel like they all kind of pull, like pull on each other. Sometimes they pull so hard that like it'll pull my neck to the point I get migraines. Uh, okay. Let's rewind just a little. Bit. Sure. Okay. Let's go back ten years ago though. Mm -hmm. um, when you said symptoms started. Right. What started first? The neck isolated. Or it actually started in the shoulder blade. Like it was like I can't sit in through a movie. Like I'd go to a movies and it'd be like this pinching, like kind of like a like knife's going through my back. Well, yeah. You were in school. Pierce College, yeah. Okay. And in school, uh, posture. Well, I used to sit like this in a chair when I was in high school, so that might have something to do with. Like it. most of us. Yeah, exactly. Um, and do you recall an event though? Was there an event around college time? that you kinked your neck, you slipped, you fall, you had a, some sort of trauma? I've seen the videos and the only thing I could think of is skateboarding fell from under me and right hip fell on the sidewalk. Right hip fell on the sidewalk? And the, the bad side. So that might have exacerbated it. Okay. But Before that? You don't remember anything no. early on? Okay. No. Well, we're going to talk about a few things that we, we see there mm -hmm. uh, in terms of potential injuries or slips or falls, mm -hmm. okay, whether we remember it or not. Right. Um, I do see there is a discrepancy between one SI joint and the other, and I do see there was some fall or trauma, mm -hmm. but that the, the, the trauma or the wear and tear I see is more on the left side. That's what's interesting. We need to figure this out. Sometimes I'll have a pain right here, but nowhere else on my left side. Low back, left side, foundation. We'll, we'll get into it. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So number one reason you're here, mm -hmm. pain that's starting right around. You're telling me around C two. I'm just gonna. It's okay. around yeah, C two. Around there. And it's going down the front first, mm -hmm. around the tr front more oh. scalenes collarbone. Yes. Goes Those under. Are tight. Goes underneath it. The collarbone. And then it goes out this way. It 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 kind of goes both ways. It goes here, it stops here, but then it also goes through my back. Uh-huh. So it's right. splitting. Hold on. Let me like lock my shoulder blades right here. Okay. Let go. So where he, what he's talking about is part of levator scapula. Yeah. And a lo all these muscles you're describing are controlled by what? The brachial plexus, the nerves that come out of the neck. Mm -hmm. But the one interesting thing you're saying is it started here and it's traveling all the way down to here. It used to go into my knee and sometimes I have to like crack my foot 
for whatever reason, I do it intuitively okay. just to get like a little bit of relief. It feels tight and it, my body's always clicking and cracking like bones. I'll go like, she calls me an old man. <laughs> I'm 30. You got a long way to go, brother. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what else is going on besides this? I mean, sometimes the pain will wake me up at night. Like at 2 in the morning, I'll fist full of Tylenol just to go back to sleep. Sometimes it'll be, I'll watch a movie and a tear will come out of my eye from the pain. Like it just, it, it goes, it's up and down. It's really, mm -hmm. it's yeah. annoying to say the least. Okay. How is Fine. your sleep? Um, this nostril is a little messed up. We have a little deviated septum. Septum. Yeah. Do you want me to check that for you? Sure. Well? Please. Okay. Why are you here? Let's go there. Pain. Pain. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to be doing, or what is it? What do you? What would you like out of the experience here? More energy. Less pain. Okay. And from all the activities you'd like to do that you're not doing, what would you like to do again? Sleep better, better focus and concentration, and more energy. So normal daily activities. And be able, I feel like I this stunts growth in the gym. Like I feel like because my muscles are tight, it's not locking in place the way it's supposed to to stretch the muscle the way it's like. Like I'm doing, it, my muscles are disproportional because something's off. And like I'm trying to build on a bad foundation. We're going over the whole body. Mm -hmm. We're gonna f talk about a lot about the foundation and what came as a result of the imbalance. Mm -hmm. And you know what I do here. Yes. We're finding out what's out of balance, mm -hmm. that's why we're here, and what do we need to do to get back in balance. Does that sound about right? Yes. Yeah. And if we do our job, then all these symptoms you're talking about should what? Slowly go away over time. Yeah. yeah. Or get better. What are you feeling right now? Just the tightness here, here. Um, do you hear that little crack? It's just normal movement, just click, click, okay. click, click all the time. Have you seen anyone for this? You said you've seen a couple of chiropractors, and they doctors, just they just turn me on my side, click, you know, crack, and it doesn't seem like they had like a like pinpointed where it's coming from, why. It just seems like they're just going through the motions, like they do it with every patient. What about? Any I went to doctors, orthopedic, orthopedic specialist, MRI, they said you're fine. And I'm like, I know MRI I'm not fine. For what? I told them I had pain and it's bothering me all the time. And it gets worse sometimes with stress and with sitting for long periods of time, standing for long periods of time, like Disneyland. It's it's fun, but horrible at the same time. Understood. Okay. Yeah. But they're like, no, you're fine. No, this is normal. Just come back if you keep experiencing more pain. Come back and do what? Exactly, exactly. They don't get <laughs> a treatment or like the next steps. Here's the next person to see. They just kind of just. We don't know what to do. Yeah, kind of. They just said it's not that bad. It's. They. I don't know what they're seeing because I don't know how to see an MRI. So. Okay, we're gonna talk about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think we're gonna get a lot of answers today. And I, I want. So. I want to make sure you understand everything I'm gonna explain. If for any reason you don't stop me, I'll continue and I'll keep explaining it until you get it. You bet. Once we get it, it's easy. Cool. Okay? Shall we get started? Let's do it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to watch him walk. And what we're looking at, we're looking at the overall body mechanics, okay? And the things we want to focus on, I'll go over the posture of what I see here. Things we want to focus on in his walk are first his dimples. We want to make sure as he's walking, those, those dimples, which are called the PSISs, are moving symmetrically up and down through the joint properly. We want to look at his gait. Is anything off balance? How, did, how are his feet? And the first thing is, yes, you can see this right foot wants to flare out or externally rotate a little bit. Now look straight ahead, please. As we're looking here, we can see we have a little bit of a sway back where his upper body, especially around the shoulder blades, are slightly behind the foundation. So what that means is these muscles are working out of balance. If they're working out of balance, they're using a lot of energy. Yep. Okay? So that's the first thing. Next thing, let's look here. We can see the right side is a little more developed here than the left side. If we look at the wing bones, 
Okay, so under here and under here, you can see the right side is higher. So this whole thing is higher and out. So we want to know, is this coming from the shoulder or is it coming from somewhere in the spine? Okay? Mm -hmm. And last thing is we're going to look at the crease. You can see the crease is off. This crease looks a little higher. This crease looks a little lower. And I want you to see something. You see I can pinch this. This is actually swelling, dude. Really? This is swelling. So people don't take this bad place. Okay. People call this back fat. Okay, I've had several cases like this. This is swelling. So if we get this balance, this is gonna go. That'd be sweet. I said it on camera. Okay. All right. Hold you to it. Let's walk. Walk it out. Let's see what we got. And you say you coming from where? Sherman Oaks. Oh, you're local. Yep. Very nice. Walk it out for me, please. Good. So as you, is this your normal walk? Yes. Okay. Is this his normal walk? Not yet. Mm -hmm. Is this his normal walk? Yeah. Okay. Keep walking. Let's watch the dimples. And what do we see with the dimples? It kind of does this. Mm -hmm. The right one goes up, and then the left one, instead of going up, it slides. Look at the dimples. It slides like this. Instead of doing this, watch my hands. So instead of the SI joints moving up and down this way, mm -hmm. you're doing this you're sliding mm -hmm. from up on the right down on the left it's sliding this way his tailbone keep yeah. walking how old are the shoes that you're wearing right now three years old okay is that I, bad i want you to get a new pair of shoes or something that's less than two months old Okay. Because it's like the alignment of the car, right? We're going to fix alignment. Uh -huh. We do have some gait issues in your walk I'm going to discuss in a minute. Uh -huh. But if the alignment in the car is off for, for a long time, the tires wear unevenly, right? Uh -huh. So your shoes are your tires. I see. Okay? And as we're going to change stuff today. If you wear the old shoes or the old and tires, right back, right? well, it's, it's not going to benefit as much. Got it. Okay, so he kind of sways side to side yep. also. You have external rotation right foot on the back heel, so we probably have more wear, wearing on the back right foot. His right leg is slightly thinner than his left leg, slightly. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see more of the ankle on the right than the left. Look at his calf. You can see the right calf is just slightly smaller than that, than the left. Okay. And is this how you swing your arms, sir, when yes. you normally walk? Okay. Everything so. is how I normally walk. Got it. Okay. So we don't got the Sherman Oates wiggle. We don't <laughs> got the wiggle. We got, we got the slide. This is the first. I've never said this before. He's got the Sherman Oaks slide. He's sliding down that hill on the other side. Interesting. All good. Okay, come over here. Let's go to your x-rays. This is a picture in time. This is your full spine x-ray. And let's go over this. First thing, this is the lateral film. This is looking at you from behind. Neck, thoracic, low back. This is the A to P film. This was taken in one shot. You've watched a lot of what I talk about, and this is all based on Dr. Gonstead's work of the level foundation principle, right? right. 24 bones in the spine, 23 discs in between, and this is the foundation of the build. Let's get an overall presentation of what's going on. We can see the spine, it kinks a little bit in the mid back and then it kinks a little bit there as well, right? Mm -hmm. But I wanna be clear first, I'm not in the business of straightening spines. Right. That's not my business. Right. Okay, and I'll explain why. On the lateral film, when we're looking at both of these, it's more important to have the right curvature on the lateral film, which means what? We're designed to have 60 degree reciprocating curves. 60, 60, 60, 180, we're upright, mm -hmm. right? It protects us against the forces of gravity. And for whatever reason we lose the curve, the body goes through a lot of defenses to try to protect us and compensate, correct. Let's look at the foundation and what are some of the things, I'm gonna go over the structure first then I'm going to talk about some of the soft tissue findings, okay? Now, you're telling me trauma. You don't remember any specific fall or trauma. I'm going to show you why there was a trauma. I know there was, <laughs> okay? Whatever it was, hopefully we figure it out. It could have been a car accident. 
but I don't really, I didn't walk out feeling pain or soreness or anything. How old were you? I was going to see some, so I must have been 22. Okay. I was just making a normal left, and then the car just went boom into me at like 60 miles per hour, like T-bone. But I remember I was fully Wait, conscious. Wait, you, you don't think that's significant? I think it was, but I don't remember limping. I don't remember pain. I don't remember it could have, but I... Okay. I'm going to... Let's go through this and let's figure it out. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yep. Okay. Go into the foundation. What does this mean? EX6 P5L, 6 millimeters is referring here. So let's talk about this pelvis. Pelvis is balanced like this, the left pelvis, and I listed the left pelvis because of lowest lumbar body rotation. Left pelvis is going EX, it's going out. So it, the left pelvis, we're referencing the PSIS. Let's show you on the X and the spine model. Left pelvis here, we're referencing the PSIS to the sacrum. So the left pelvis is EX, it goes out. Hmm. Look, this way. Conversely, it could be the right pelvis that's in, but I marked it according to the system. Right. What I find on you is what I find on you. Mm -hmm. I'm just showing you the way the pelvis works, they work in opposite. If one goes up, the other goes down. If one mm -hmm. goes out, the other goes in. So what I'm showing you here is we listed the left side because of lumbar body rotation. Left pelvis is going out this way or causing the body to turn to the right. right. The sacrum, this is the, cha this is the challenge. The sacrum is rotating on the left side. This is your disconnect. Mm -hmm. So we have rotation on this left side going this way. We have an EX going this way. And you have all this scar tissue inside this SI joint that you do not have here. I mean, the pain is all on the right side. Okay. But remember, we're not chasing pain. Exactly. Okay, you've yeah. already been that route. Yeah. So let's look here. I want you to, we already know it's there, mm -hmm. right? We have a P5-L. Look closely here. When we're looking at the SI joint, you can see swelling in there, yes. Right. Okay? You can see swelling here, but then look what happened here. That's because the sacrum and the, the pelvis, they're, they're doing this. Mm -hmm. And so the body's trying to stabilize it with what? Scar tissue and calcium. Yeah. And that's why you're getting stuck whether it's, we'll see it on you. Mm -hmm. So it's not about that we're just following, hey, I have pain all down my right side. Right. Right, it's about. Where is it originating from? Correct, so mm -hmm. that's number one. Now, can I go deeper into the sacrum? Let's go deeper. I drew these lines here, okay? These, the sacrum is five segments when you're born, five tubercles, S1, 2, and 3, 4, fuse. 5. They ossify. They become one bone and ossify about 32, 33. So we still got time. We still have time. Now, I see that we had a fall here, and I want to outline it to show you. Okay? This is level. This is level. These foramens are level. This is where you see this is higher, this is lower. It's tilting. Yeah. So it's almost like the tailbone is kinking down here. That was your original old fall, dude. And that's what's causing the spine to do this. And when, what is it doing here? It's, this is just compensation, okay? It's hiding somewhere down. This is S1, S2, S3, or even S4, okay? That's, that's a big thing here we need to sort out. So if we're starting on the sacrum, which I don't know because now, if we go according to the chapters, the Gonstead chapters and the, and the book, this is actually in page 43 of the Gonstead chapters. When you have an EX pelvis on the side of a rotated sacrum or you have a PI or a PIEX, it says to do the pelvis first. If you have, if it was stuck up or in and we had the rotated sacrum, we would do sacrum first. Now, all this is dependent that I find it on you here. Right. If I do find this, then yeah, we're working on the right. Of course. Okay, just so we're clear. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to your foundation? It does. So I know whether you're telling me or not, there was something's a fall. Hiding something, yeah. Something's course. hiding in there. Okay, now let's do the level foundation principle. Starting from the base, okay? First one to go off level, five. 
four already comes back. Three goes again. Two goes with it. One goes with it. Twelve goes with it. Eleven comes back to level. I'm just showing you this as compensation. Yeah. We're getting some calcification in there. It's been there a minute. Eleven is the next base. Ten goes off level. That's, guess what area this is? The adrenal. thoracic area, right? Adrenal area. Energy. Yeah. Okay. Nine. Makes ten. Sense. Nine goes out. Eight goes out. Seven goes out. Six comes back to normal. She's always complaining why you're so tired all the time. <laughs> Hopefully we're going to change all that today. Next one to go off from six is five. Five goes with it, four, and that's why his right shoulder is higher on that side because he's compensating. Yeah? So it looks like shoulders higher, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's because of spine. Five, four goes with it, three goes with it, two goes with it. Wow. One goes with it, seven comes back to level, and then six goes off. So what did we just do with this? We're showing you potentials. We know there's a potential here, there's a potential at 5L, there's a potential at 3L, but I don't see two so close together, one or the other. There's a potential at 10T, there's a potential at 5T, there's a potential at 6C. <laughs> Potentials. It's yeah. just potentials, okay? Now, is this clear on this x-ray? Yes. Okay, now, one last piece of the puzzle here. Because you said where you're telling me it's starting is actually where? Is C1, C2, yeah. Could be posterior arches. And then sometimes I feel the tightness in my, I open my mouth and my jaw clicks. It'll like, it feels tighter on my right side. I feel like my left side of my face is a little more leaner or thinner. Okay, that makes sense. But I want to show you something here too. Three and four line up. Two is slightly off, one goes with it. Potential at 2C as well. Can you do me one favor? Mm -hmm. Can you uncross your arms, please? Mm -hmm. uh, energy wise, we want to give information back and forth. Sure. And I tell a lot of I do tell a lot of people this that when we're going over it, this kind of blocks. So we're receiving and giving Perfect. each other. Okay. Now let's continue. That means you two in the back. Arms down. Thank you. Okay. Let's talk about this. We said 60 degree reciprocating curves. The first thing we should be doing is a posture assessment. Typically, posture assessments, they use a weighted string. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever had one done in any physical therapy, no. chiro, doctor, no. anything. So Never. what they do is they run a, a weighted string. From the ear, the ear should line up with the shoulder, the hip, the knee, the ankle. Have you heard about this? No. Okay. You can look this up. It's called a plumb line, right? Postural plumb line. I like to do it, and I was taught to do it through the x-ray using the laser level. L5, you see I'm level here. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we get a zoom in on the bubble here, please? Can we get a zoom in on the bubble? We're level. This should go through C7, excuse me, C7 and C2. Now, what does this tell us? This is what I was showing you. The, the upper body shoulder, all of this sits behind the foundation, so the muscles and ligaments are slightly off balance. Okay? Now, Let's go through the curvature. Curvature is decent in the low back. That sway back is from the pot, from what's going on in the foundation. But here's the issue that we need to talk about and things you're going to need to do at home once we get the tension off the spine. This curve needs to go forward. You're starting to develop the reverse or the tech neck or the tex neck. Okay. I've heard of that. Right? Your discs are fantastic. You have good discs. Seven is good. Six is good. Five is good. Four. Three is slight. You can see three is slightly a little bit less. Why? Because it's, the, it's where it's curving the opposite way. So there's a lot of hypermobility up in the upper neck. That's causing your wear and tear. Now, 
we're going to see if this is really the culprit and this has been compensating. Okay? We're going to focus on foundation. No problem. If we have to decide between systems with you, because you told me energy and fatigue is a big issue. Yeah. So whatever we do, I'm hoping we can end in the sympathetics to give you that boost. That'd be great. Okay. Any questions on this so far? None. I know it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot of information to process. I want to go over your discs now. Let's give you some good news. Lots of good news. Your discs are good. Okay. Your discs are good. This looks like it's worn out a little bit. It's because of the kink. You're looking at the undersurface. This is a big misrepresentation. A lot of people were taught or told that I've seen they've brought me extra. They say, oh, that's degenerated. Doc, that's what the doctor told me. Mm -hmm. All that is is this. Because of the kinking here, yeah. you're looking at the undersurface there. Mm. That's all that is. Your discs are good through. We start to get a little bit here because this is doing what? Compensation. That's the compensation, right. so it's wearing out a little more than normal. As we go up the spine, discs are good, discs are good, discs are good, discs are good all the way through. Three is a little less, like I said, and 11, and 11 12 maybe a little bit less. Mm -hmm. So if we do our job, get things moving, what should theoretically happen? All this stuff should stop. Can't wait. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, come on. This is like we gotta have a we gotta break up the anxiety, okay? Yeah. And I'm trying to say is the number one thing here with what we're gonna do, lots and lots of walking. Mm -hmm. So your job is to get him walking. Would you recommend running? Not right now. Okay. That's before I start then five top rehabilitative exercises for the spine, cross country skiing, number one. But we don't, we're not skiing here. <laughs> Siberia, yes. yes. Cross country skiing is what? Elliptical with the handles. Ah. Swimming. Okay. Bicycle. Running a nine minute mile or faster. I can. Jogging is not indicated. But for right now, I ask with all new patients for a few visits. Mm -hmm. Don't add any extra variables right now. Lots of walking, lots of biking, lots of hiking. Mm -hmm. Lots of movement is fine. Just no running or jogging. Only for this week. Okay. Okay? Got it. I just don't want an extra variable right now. Okay. okay. What about Stairmaster? Stairs are fine. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about some uneven walking as well, how I want you to walk. Uh, Jim, I would throw out all your variables right now. Just walking. I do it normally three times a week, every week. What's that? Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday I go to the gym. This week, no gym. <laughs> Can you deal with it? Oh, she's excited about that. This week, no gym. <laughs> Okay. This week, no gym, please. Okay? Okay. All right? Got it. Sit up straight. Let's get started. Okay. Starting at the base of the neck. And the first thing we're getting is 15, 17 points. 20 points. C2. Come, you can watch. Don't be scared. You can come up here if you want. We're looking at the meter. Mm -hmm. You can see here. So when everything is balanced, it should be zero. Mm -hmm. You can also tell them when we're doing it. You can see the needle goes all the way to 17, almost 20 points there, and then it comes back. Yes? Mm -hmm. So that's the first nerve pressure. Do me a favor, please, uncross your arms. Thank you. Energy. Energy. <laughs> Next thing we're getting, 15 points, mid-back, T5, T6. All right. T5, 15 points. Very distinct. Good. And it's going to take us all the way down. You can see, all the way down, down low, S3, S4, 10 points. S3, S4, T5, C2, those are the three majors today. 
Scoot forward, please. Let's check movement in the pelvis. Feet together. Open and close your knees. And watch my thumbs. Right side only. Now when he does the right, there's a little bit of movement on that left side. They should move independently. Left side only. Interesting. Right side. Left side. Okay. They're both moving. They both have a tiny bit of restriction. However, is it there? How about there? Not as bad. Not as bad, but it still hurts. Yes. That's your EX pelvis on the left side. Scoot back for me, please. Okay. This is L5. Back slowly towards me. 5. S1. S2. S3. S4. Right there. S4. Feet together. Open and close. Good. Right side only. Left side only. Is it easier for you to open your left or yeah, your right? Yeah, left. Okay. Right side only. Okay, and then right side, I'm on the lateral aspect of the PSIS is on both sides. As I push both sides together. Ah, left. Yeah. Left was your initial injury, brother. Interesting. Yes. I thought it would be the right side since that's where the pain is. Yes. If that's, if that's the foundation, I guess. Head down, please. Round your back. Static palpation. Running our fingers down the spine. As I'm getting to right about T3, 4, you start to see the swelling there. And you can see it pull right there. 7, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 5. That's 6. Both are tender, sir, yes? Yeah. 6. How about 7? Not, Not as so bad. Much. Not so much. 6. <gasps> Now you can see his normal posture, okay? The way he's sitting. Go back to the way you were normally sitting. Okay. And I want you to just take note of the musculature here. You can see this more pronounced here, more pronounced here, more pronounced here, and then a little flatter in through here. It's a good before and after visual for us to see. Now let's check the neck. Sit back for me, sir. Seven, six, relax, let me do the work, please, mm -hmm. sir. Put your feet out in front of you. Down, six, head down, six, five, four, three, two. Left side, right side, <coughs> left side. Yeah. C2 left, T5 six, T6 more. S4 left pelvis. Right. We need to make some decisions because nothing is textbook here. Right. Okay, let's figure out what we're gonna do. We found him on the x-ray, we found him on you, we need to make some decisions. Mm -hmm. We have an S4 left EX, left EX, external rotated pelvis. We have a T6 on you and a C2, okay? So my thought process with you, again, this is none of these cases that are coming in our textbook. Mm -hmm. In your case, I'd like to start up high, C2, because that's your initial yeah. complaint with your foundation S4. Mm -hmm. Then I'll have you walk back and forth. We'll recheck everything. If T6 is still there. If pelvis isn't changed at all, then we'll continue into site. Sounds good. Fair enough? Yeah. Let's get started. You have seen this before, right? Right. You know you're here now, right? <laughs> okay. Slide up a little bit, please. You're going to have to help me. You have to hold his leg. Can you hold his legs for me? Mm -hmm. Hold his ankles here. Hold them down, but not tight. Catch, don't push so hard. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Okay, S4. Senor, slide up a little more, please. S1, S2, S3, S4. There you go. All good, Ryan. Deep breathing. All the way out. So I'm starting on S4. I'm not doing the rotation at S1. Just straight S4. Nice and easy. Let him go, please. Not bad. Walk that off once and we'll continue. Have a seat. We're not evaluating now, we're just going through the process. Cool. Now I will note, we don't normally adjust C2 when it's starting to go into a reverse curve. There are a few special circumstances we were taught. One is lateral wedging, okay? When there's significant lateral wedging, right there. Then I may bump it once or twice, not a lot, okay? We'll just get it started. Chin down, please. Feet out, resting on your heels all the way out. Perfect. Look up. It's going to be a lot lighter than you think, okay? Chin down. You got to give me the head, though. You got to just get, let it fall back, okay? I'm not going to go hard. You got to get underneath your C2. And it's very simple in terms of we just have to flip the switch on, okay? That's been off. Look up. Yeah. That was very light to start. Go ahead and walk that off now, please. Now, just from that, what we just did, nice and easy and light, mm -hmm. you'll walk two times. Tell me if anything is different yet. It's hard to say. No problem. Have a seat over here, please. Let's run the meter now and see what changed. And one of the things we talked about earlier is, you know, there are layers. We have an initial trauma, right? the body compensates, and as the body compensates, what happens? Other things start to show. But I want you to see this, C2 is zero. Tell him, Nadia. Harasho. Mm -hmm. Harasho. Harasho. Ochin Harasho. Ochin Harasho. This one is still there in the mid-back. We will do it, okay? Scoot forward, please. More. Feet together. Open and close your knees. Open wide, sir. Right side only. Nice. Left side. Nice. Right side. Nice. Scoot back for me. Let's check S4 just to make sure. Back slowly. Good. All the way back, please. I got you. One, two, three. Yeah, it doesn't hurt as bad. I'm pushing on the bone. It should be a little less, yeah? A little less. Okay. Let's go right side down, please. Can you let it roll? I got you. I won't sure. drop you, I promise. Let it roll. Let it roll. Come up slowly, please. And let's go over your face down. Slide up a little more, please, Ryan. Gotcha. Breathe. Tiny bit more. There's the rest. Okay, let's walk that off. Back and forth several times. 
little spicy in that mid back, yeah? Yeah, a little bit. Good. Now, do me a favor. If you can sit against the, the floor. Sit on the, against the wall. Okay. And the test is not that. The test is getting up. It should be different. Stand up, please. Definitely. Different, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Walk on your toes. Turn around, walk on your heels. The idea is this. I don't want you at the gym right now because we're not trying to work out imbalances. Right. Why are you, we don't want to strengthen an imbalance. Got it. We got to change all these old patterns. Right? Right. Alignment's off, hitting potholes, driving to work. We fix the <laughs> alignment. We're not hitting the same potholes, dude. Right. That's it. Come back over here, have a seat. Let's run the meter on your back and make sure everything's clear and continue on. Neck is clear. All right. Mid back is clear. It went from hero to zero. Joking. It's all clear. Mm -hmm. All clear. Let's feel that S4 one more time. Scoot forward, please. Just to make sure. All the way back. Good. Yourself, all the way back. That's, sorry, that's your five. Okay. Mm -hmm. S1, all the way back. S2, all the way back. S3, all the way back. S4. Yeah, doesn't hurt as bad. Sit back now. Let's tune up the ears. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulders, let me do the work. Over, around, down, let me do it. There you go. Over, around, let me do it. There you go. Now you get the buff and polish. Next, let's go on your back. Stand up for me, please. And I'm going to put that there. Let's work on your feet. And you've seen me use the board. Yep. The board is to absorb the, the stresses. I can go quicker on it. Slide up headward, please. Right there. <gasps> yeah. Both of them. Now, we did a lot in the low back. I'm not going to do those. You've seen me do lotion and, and yeah. long axis. We're not starting that today. Okay. We're going to use the board so we don't disrupt anything in the back. Ankle sprains. These are old ankle sprains. Okay. 26, 28 bones in the foot. Six major misalignments that can occur. I'm going to go through the this, this six in order and see what you have and fix accordingly. So number one, we know there's an AS talus. It's stuck on the medial side there. Number two, so first is the talus. Number two is the fibula. His is stuck posterior. It should be forward. I can move it still, but it needs to go forward just a tiny bit. Posterior, fibula. Next, calcaneus. Calcaneus is, you can hear a little bit, there's a little bit of that little clicking. Yeah. Little clicking. That clicking is the ligament going over the joint. Mm -hmm. It's like the pulley system at the gym the way I explain these extremities, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the joints are the pulleys, these are the cables. Right. If the pulley's out of alignment, what happens to the cable? Yeah. Click. Okay. Next, navicular, we have that, inferior navicular. If we drop the metatarsals, we have a slight dropped fourth metatarsal. And coming off the third digit, we have middle cuneiform, second cuneiform. <laughs> That drops down, starts to rub on the fascia, and that's why his fascia is getting a little tight here. Okay, so we're gonna do talus, we're gonna do fibula, we're gonna, oh, I forgot cuboid, hold on. Not bad. No. So his calcaneus and cuboid are good. We're gonna do talus, we're gonna do fibula. We're not gonna do these today. The reason why is if I got a calcaneus and a cuboid, there's an order. Okay. 
But because I didn't get these two, I'm going to set these two and let the body take care of the rest. Awesome. Okay, let's do it. Now this side. Talus. Nice. Stand up and walk it out, sir. I'm just going to wash out. Not painful. So as you're walking now, after the adjustment spine extremities, tell me if anything is different to you. Um, right hip is not as, you know, it feels good. I feel lighter. Okay. How is that C2 back there? Better. Okay. Let's talk about the right hip because you said it, we, were, we were very convinced that it was the right hip you were coming right. in with. Right. And we didn't touch the right hip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your homework with me is very simple. Water, walking, and ice. Okay. Ice the areas I adjusted 20 minutes on, wait at least one hour. I would be doing for you right now three sessions a day, icing. Okay. That I, that I adjusted. Any particular time, like 15 minutes? 15 to 20 minutes. Wait at least an hour if you want to do another round around the same time. I would definitely say do it in the morning and in the evening. Got it. Okay. Keep walking, please. And forms of cardio, just because I can't go to the gym, can I do that? You can go to the gym and do elliptical with the handles. What about like jump rope? Okay, no. I don't want at the I don't moment, want to risk anything. I yeah. don't want any high ballistic movements. I want low impact. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you go on the on the elliptical with the handles. After, I want you to do what's called a two to one ratio on any of your cardio now. Ten minutes forward, five minutes reverse. Okay. Ten you wanna walk on the treadmill, ten minutes forward, five minutes reverse. Squeeze. Radial head, posterior humor, squeeze. Start with posterior humerus, radial head. <laughs> Go like that five times. Squeeze. Good. Now we need to do posterior distal radius, lunate, scaphoid. There you go. Go like that five times. Squeeze. Better. Squeeze. This one's good, just a tiny bit. You a mouse guy or a trackpad guy? Uh, mouse. Okay. Right there, lunate scaffold. There you go. Squeeze. Squeeze. You do feel that, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, one more time. Okay, that's where we're gonna start. Awesome. Questions? None. Welcome to the office, sir. Thank you, Dr. You got it.